You've just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. We've said it before and it bears repeating that the first step in assessing the complex and extraordinary claims of this reconstruction is to be crystal clear as to the core details and their testable implications. This stylized form is the fulcrum of the reconstruction. From here we can look backwards and forwards to name critical events in the evolution of the configuration. We earlier named the planetary components. Saturn is the large sphere at the celestial pole, no rings at the time. Venus is the discharging star-like form on axis in the center of Saturn. And the smallest sphere, Mars, visually appearing within the sphere of Venus. We've called this a quasi-stable phase of an evolving or metamorphosing configuration. Episodic motions of Mars occurred along the axis, provoking streams of material alternately between Mars and Venus and between Mars and Earth. We also observed dramatic changes in the number of discharged streamers that stretch between Venus and Saturn. In episode 4, we described the emergence of a triangular form from the dusty plasma medium and a subsequent explosive discharge producing a vast cloud of luminous and chaotic debris in the space surrounding the aligned bodies. Later appeared the eight-rayed star, the centerpiece of our chronology, marking a tentative stabilization of the discharge activity. We've noted as well that a libration occurred along the axis such that from Earth the different discharge configurations were seen alternately on axis and off axis. For any assessment of this reconstruction, the shifts in three-dimensional vantage point will be essential. In the early phases of the configuration, the interplanetary medium prevented observation of the Sun as a discrete sphere. Though the Sun's lighting effects on the configuration become quite clear with the appearance of the crescent on Saturn. This meant not only a reduction in the surrounding dusty plasma medium, but a more clearly defined cycle of day and night. At the polar location, the crescent visually revolved around the polar center with the rotation of the Earth in a daily cycle of dimming and brightening. Closely associated with the appearance of this turning crescent was the descent of material from Mars. The first effect was a luminous spike reaching Earthward. As Mars moved closer to the Earth, the downward stream of material extended well below the visible sphere of Saturn, eventually connecting with the circumpolar region of the Earth. It seems that over time, the eightfold Venus discharge was compressed into just four directional streamers expanding across the face of Saturn. This phase seems to have merged insensibly with another as a dusty plasma column between Mars and Venus exhibited a conical form when seen slightly off-axis, while appearing as a bright equatorial band around Mars when viewed on-axis. Metamorphosis continued with the progressive displacement of Venus and Mars from their axial positions, the plasma stream between the two bodies taking on a spiraling form. As we'll see in due course, with continued displacement, the spiraling plasma stream between Mars and Venus gave way to a chaotic, undulating appearance as the configuration itself grew catastrophically unstable. The violent episodes that followed marked the most terrifying events in all of human history. 
The disastrous interlude between the dismemberment of the configuration and a spectacular phase of reconstruction. 